Do you know that there is only one God in three eternal persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you know that Jesus said he is the only way to heaven, and his death and resurrection bring forgiveness of sins to all who believe? Welcome to the Pastor Study, a ministry of pastorstudy.org. Join us now as we study God's Word, the Bible, together. Welcome to the Pastor Study. There is a certain person in the New Testament that only shows up three times, but each time she shows up, she's at the feet of Jesus. Do you know who that is? It's Mary of Bethany. Now, this is not Mary, Jesus' mother. It's a different Mary, the Mary of Bethany, the sister of Lazarus and Martha. The first time she shows up, she's at Jesus' feet listening to him while Martha, her sister, is in the kitchen. The second time she shows up, she's at Jesus' feet grieving because her brother Lazarus is dead. And the last time she shows up, it's the week of Jesus' death, and she's at his feet putting perfume on his feet. And Jesus said, let her keep the perfume for the day of my burial. Today we're going to talk about prayer. How can you come to be at Jesus' feet? And we're going to learn in a minute Mary got there because she chose to be there. If you're going to have a real relationship with God, you've got to push other stuff out of your life and make room for the most important thing in life. You've got to choose it. So would you take out your Bible? We'll turn to the famous Mary and Martha story, Luke chapter 10. And let's learn all that we can about prayer from Mary. Let's pray first. Father, as we talk about prayer today, we pray that each of us listening to this would have a real, good, deep prayer life. Teach us now, Lord, how to pray and how to do this. And uh, Lord, just would you instruct each one of us about how to pray. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Ma Ma uh, Luke chapter 10, starting at verse 38. Now as they, Jesus and the disciples, went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed in her in, him into her house. And Martha had a sister called Mary, this is Mary Bethany, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. First point I want you to get today is being with Jesus isn't just talking, it's also listening. Now, you know, I hope you have a prayer life. I hope you pray every day. But I also hope you take time to listen when you're praying. I have a dear friend who recently lost her husband of 50 years. And she told me, what I do now in the morning, I pray, Lord Jesus, you're my boss. What are your marching orders for today? What would you have me do? And she just kind of thinks on it. And that's how she lives that day. <laughs> And I'll, I'll tell you what I do. I mean, I pray in English, of course, talk to the Lord. But then periodically I say, Lord, is there anything you want to say to me? And I'll just be quiet. And overwhelmingly, I get nothing. <laughs> but this happened last week. I, I did that, and Dave's uh, picture, uh, Dave, uh, an older man I know, came to mind. Well, maybe I'm supposed to take Dave out to lunch today. And I called him, called him up, and we did it. So... Take time to listen when you're praying, but you know the main way we listen to Jesus is by reading this book. I read my Bible every day. This is the main way Jesus speaks to us. So make sure you're not just praying every day. Make sure you're listening and reading the Bible every day. Next verse, verse Luke 10, verse 40. But Martha, Mary's sister, was distracted with much serving. And she went up to Jesus and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve all alone? Tell her then to help me. <laughs> Here's the next lesson. Hearing Jesus is more important than serving Jesus. So here's a pastor who preaches on this story, Mary and Martha, and he preaches, well, you know, we need both Mary and Martha in the church. We need Marys who are listening to Jesus and uh, serving him that way, but we also need Marthas in the church, busy around the kitchen and doing the duties of the church. Pastor, 
That's not the point of this story. You know the point of this story? Everybody is to be Mary. Nobody is to be Martha. Because if you don't hear from Jesus first, and if you try to serve people without hearing from him, you're going to mess people up. I'll give you an example here. So I, there was a documentary on Minneapolis TV about three street preachers. So I'm watching these street preachers, and one of them was preaching, there's a heaven, there's a hell, we're sinners, we need Christ, and his atoning death to be saved. Very good. But then one of the preachers says, you know, I haven't sinned for years. And I thought, 1 John chapter 1, if we say we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves. And then the other preacher said, and you know, the Bible teaches that black people should serve white people. I'm thinking, where on earth is he getting this? And you know what these preachers need to do? They need to stop serving Jesus and slow down and start hearing Jesus. They need to study scriptures on those issues because if you're serving Jesus without hearing from him first, you're going to mess people up. I mean, I play the guitar. If I just start playing the guitar without tuning it up first, it sounds awful. But if I take the time to tune it, then the song sounds good. Listen, you got to do that. Make sure you are in tune with Christ. You're praying. You're listening to Scripture. Because if you try to serve Him without being in tune with Him first, you're going to hurt people. Next verse, verse 41. But the Lord said to her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. Here's the next lesson. Lack of time with Jesus causes anxiety. <laughs> You've probably seen the bumper sticker. Seven days without prayer makes one W-E-A-K. Uh, psychiatrist Bulkley wrote these words. My whole life has been concerned with sufferings of the mind. I would state that of all the therapeutic measures employed to counteract disturbed sleep, depression, and all the ailments of a disturbed mind, I would undoubtedly give first place in therapy to the simple habit of prayer. So if you choose not to have time with Jesus, that will cause you anxiety because, as it's, the old hymn goes, Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. So do yourself a favor. Spend time in prayer. It'll make you healthy. I, I mean, I had a professor in college who said, I find that if I spend my time with God in the morning, I have more time later in the day. But if I skip my time with God in the morning, somehow I have less time during the day. That's been true for me too. So, I mean, think of it this way. Here's the huge God who created the universe. He can do everything. And here's little me who can do just about nothing. Aren't I going to Shouldn't I tap into this huge source of the universe and try instead of trying to fix things myself? <laughs> there was a cotton factory in the south, and it had a sign on the wall, if your threads get tangled, buzz for the foreman. There was a button there. And so the, the, the workers were at their looms making the thread and everything, and one new worker got her threads tangled, and she tried to fix it herself, and the more she did, the more messy it got. Finally, she went over and pushed the button. Foreman comes down. You tried to fix this yourself, didn't you? Well, I did the best I could. And he said, no, you didn't. You doing the best you can is buzzing for me. You know, the best thing you can do at the beginning of every day, spend time alone with the foreman, with the creator of the universe, and he can help you live a less tangled life. <laughs> uh, verse 42, Luke 10, 42. But the Lord said, you are bothered, Martha, about many things, but only a few things are necessary really only one. Here's the next lesson. Prayer is the one necessary thing. Now, um, 
I remember years ago, my elders and I from the church went off on a retreat and we said, okay, Lord, what is your will for Hope Lutheran Church this year? What, what are you calling us to do? And the message we believed we got was prayer needs to be at the center of everything. Prayer is the one necessary thing. Uh, a fisherman in France prayed this in the morning. Keep me, O God. My boat is so small and your ocean is so great. And you know, I'll say this too. Make sure you pray because your prayers do more than you think, not less than you think. Your prayers do more than you think. In World War I, I believe it was, a live grenade landed in the foxhole. The men knew they were dead, but it didn't go off. It turned out to be a dud. And one of the men said, I think our mothers are praying for us. <laughs> Years ago, I was in college, and I said to a Christian friend, do you have a, an aspirin? Well, why? I said, I got a headache. And she said, well, did you pray about it? And I thought, well, I guess I didn't. <laughs> and she was teaching me the first thing you do when you're sick is to pray. And you know, I've said it before on the show, let me say it again. I don't see how Christians can spend $10,000 on a doctor without first doing James chapter 5. If you're sick, call for the elders, they'll anoint you with oil, and get prayer. I'm cheap enough that I get prayer first. So, I, I mean, I, I, I think I've told you this too. Uh, for about two years, I've been limping on a, on a knee and probably need knee replacement. I went to my pastor about eight months ago and I said, could you get an elder and could we do James chapter 5? And I want to tell you, the pain was gone for about eight months. Now, it started to come back. So you know what I did on Sunday? I went up, Pastor, could you anoint me with oil again? <laughs> Why not? It doesn't say you can only do it once. If I have to get a knee surgery, I will. But that's the last thing I do. The first thing I do is pray. Next verse, verse 42. One thing is necessary. For Mary has chosen the good part. Here's the next big lesson for today. You have to choose to be at Jesus' feet. I mean, my grandparents were farmers in Nebraska. When they were young, there was no TV. I'm not even sure they had radio. So if you had free time, you had two choices, read a book or go visit the neighbors. Today, you turn on TV and there's 700 channels. We especially live in a day and age where you have to choose to be at Jesus' feet. Choose to turn off the TV. Choose to turn off your iPhone. Choose to turn away from the internet or whatever it is. And you need to sit at the feet of Christ. So, let me ask you the big question. Are you doing that? Do you take time every day to sit at Jesus' feet. And well, but pastor, you don't know how busy I am. Wait a minute. If you're too busy for God, you're too busy. And you're choosing other things. Uh, perhaps you've heard of Hudson Taylor. He was the great missionary from England who spent his life in China, going from small town to town to town, living in dirty ends so he could spread the gospel of Christ. His, one of his uh, assistants wrote about him later in life and said this, we would often arrive tired at a poor inn, but we would screen off a little corner of the room for Dr. Taylor. And about 2 a.m., we would hear a match struck, see a candle was lit. It was from 2 to 4 a.m. that Dr. Taylor made room to pray and read the Bible. Mm. So if you're going to have a real relationship with God, you've got to stop the video games for a while, turn off your internet, turn off... You've got to choose to put God first. And the last part of the verse. She, Mary has chosen the good portion which will not be taken away from her. Here's the last lesson. If you choose it, you will never lose it. If you choose Christ like Mary did, you can never lose it. I mean, let's say you live at the worst place on earth to be a Christian, North Korea. They can kill you if they find you with the Bible. They, they've done this for countless Christians. They, they take away your family. They throw you in jail. They take away everything. One thing they can't take away, and that is your time 
with Jesus. And if you choose that, you will never lose that. And I want to close with one more point. Make sure that your family knows that you have chosen Jesus. A dear pastor's wife that I knew just died, and uh, she was the, the, the Lutheran pastor I grew up under in Omaha. This was his wife. He, he died a few years ago, but she just now died. And I still have a letter that she wrote me years ago. And let me just tell you the story in closing. My dad was a Catholic. He went to church every Sunday. My mom was Lutheran. All the kids were raised Lutheran. We went to church every Sunday. Dad died when I was 19 years old. Dad and I never had one conversation about God. And so later I, I start wondering, will I see Dad in heaven? I'm not saying Catholics don't go to heaven. I, I believe many of them do, but that's not my point here. He could have been a Lutheran. We never had to talk about God. So many years after he died, I thought, well, Pastor Schaff visited my Catholic dad. on his, My Lutheran pastor visited my Catholic dad when dad was dying a number of times. And I thought, I'm going to go visit Pastor Schaff. <laughs> now he was, Pastor Schaff was retired. He and Ruth, his wife, were living down in Florida. So I called him, can I, can I come over? And I was down in Florida for vacation, and they had me into their nice place. And uh, Pastor Schaff, do you remember when you used to visit my dad when he was dying? Yes. Do you think he'd know the Lord? Did he know Jesus? And he said, you know, I think he did, which made me feel good. But after I came back home to Minneapolis, I got a letter from Ruth, his wife, the pastor's wife, who just died. Dear Tom, I listened as you searched my husband's memory for any hint of where your dad was spending eternity. And I was reminded of a sermon I heard in a Presbyterian church, the best gift you can leave your relatives, your kids, your mom and dad, grandkids, is that when, you stand, when they stand at your casket, they know where you are. And it's nothing to do with how good you were, it has to do with simply believing in the Bible, etc. cetera. And um, so can I tell you my, my, my final point? If you have chosen Christ, you've chosen the better part. Talk to your kids about that. Talk to your grandkids about that. Talk to your family about that. So that when you're in your casket, they don't have to wonder, well, well I wonder where grandpa is spending eternity. So let me just, just close the whole sermon by this. I hope you push other things out of your life. And tonight, spend some time in prayer. Tomorrow morning, spend some time with, with Jesus because Jesus said the one necessary thing in life is to spend time with him and it's not gonna be taken away from you, Mary. And Martha, you need to leave the kitchen and you need to sit down at my feet as well. Amen. Welcome to the portion of the pastor's study where we ask Pastor Brock questions regarding the Bible. Pastor Brock, our first question is from a viewer. I have a prayer card with a prayer asking the Archangel Michael to protect me from the devil. But I heard you say on TV we should not pray to angels. Should I stop praying this prayer? Yeah, and this was a Catholic gentleman who I <clears throat> s bumped into, I think, at the thrift store, and I didn't know him. He said, oh, Pastor Brock, love your TV show, but and he took this out. Here's a prayer that I pray to, for the Archangel. I pray, Archangel Michael, come protect me. And he said, should I be praying this? Because you said we shouldn't pray to anybody but God. And I said, no, I wouldn't pray that. I said I'd, I would tweak it. I'd say, Lord, would you send your angels to protect me and watch over me? And I said, I, I think you can definitely do that. But I wouldn't, pray to, I wouldn't pray to Michael. I don't pray to Mary. I don't pray to St. Jude. Yeah. Okay. Should we pray to God the Father or to Jesus? Well, you, you know, that's the question, or to the Holy Spirit. And the, que and the answer is w one God and three persons. So when mm -hmm. you're praying to the Father, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, definitely here. Uh, and I think you can pray directly to the Father, directly to Jesus. I think you can pray directly to the Spirit, although there's not a clear reference to people praying directly to the Spirit. I still think you can because of the Trinity. But here's the norm. The norm is you pray to God the Father and you close your prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
Now that said, there are in the New Testament instances of people praying directly to Jesus. Mm -hmm. when, when Stephen is being stoned, he looks up to heaven, he sees Jesus at the right hand of the Father, and he says, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And Paul, the apostle, talks about praying to the Lord, and in context, he's talking about Jesus. So it, that, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. And what does it mean to pray? In Jesus name yeah when I pray for something and I pray in Jesus name it means a few things it means because of him not because of me <laughs> father I pray this in Jesus name I have no merits of my own but because of Jesus I come before you and his merits I, I ask for this uh, prayer also it means according to his will so mm -hmm. father do this but only in, in Jesus name only if it's according to his will so you're coming th to the father we're sinners we need to come to the Father through the blood, through the atoning death of Christ, and that's what makes our prayers heard. So do we always add at the end, in Jesus' name? I do. I mean, a lot of Christians just pray amen, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying that, that they're not being heard, but Jesus said, whatever you ask in my name, mm -hmm. I will do. So that's, I always end in Jesus' name. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Is it possible for me to know for sure that I'm going to heaven? Wouldn't that be arrogant? Well, 1 John 5.13, that verse changed my life. It says, I write this to you who believe in Jesus, the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. So Mona, ever since that light bulb went on, I know my sins are forgiven. I know I'm going to heaven when I die because it doesn't depend on me and my goodness. It depends on Christ, trusting in him. Mm -hmm. uh, now, are there days I doubt? Yeah, but I, I fight those doubts by promises like 1 John 5.13. So, and is it proud and arrogant to say I know I'm going to heaven? No, because it, it doesn't depend on me. It's not my work mm -hmm. righteousness. It's his righteousness that gets me into heaven. So I think it's fine to know for sure your sins are forgiven, you're going to heaven because of Christ. In fact, I wouldn't want to live life without that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. We say, come Lord Jesus at the table every night as a family. And sometimes we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Is there any other way we should pray as a family? I grew up saying, come Lord Jesus, be our guest. Let these gifts to us be blessed. Amen. It was kind of like a nursery rhyme. Mm -hmm. It's always said at the table. And I wish we would have done this. You know, let's take a moment or two just to pray and uh, whatever you want to pray and let's just go around the table mm -hmm. or whatever and just have con what's called conversational prayer. Mm -hmm. That would have made our lives so much richer. So it's not wrong to say, come Lord Jesus. It's definitely not wrong to say the Lord's Prayer together. But could we get deep into, uh, w j Jimmy, how was your day at school today? What can mm -hmm. we pray for you about? Mm -hmm. And just to be more conversational. Exactly. Yeah. We have six-year-old twins, and they love just to pray on their own. There you go. It's heartwarming. There you go. Do you have any advice on how I should pray to God when I'm alone? Uh, well, yeah. I'll, uh, you know, when you're in church, it's, it's very formal. But in, when I, Mona, what I do, I have my time with God in the morning. And during that time, I read my Bible, I pray. I like to get on my knees. You don't have to, but it helps me concentrate. So I love getting on my knees to pray. And mm -hmm. just, you know, I pray for whatever comes to mind. On Monday, I pray for health and well-being for my family and friends in the world. I pray for the persecuted church on Monday often. And then on Tuesday, I've got a list of missionaries that I pray for. But then the other days, I, they're on, on Thursday normally is when I pray for our TV show and all the Christian media ministries out there. And so, but just whatever comes to mind, but have a time every day when it's you alone with the Lord, mm -hmm. you're reading your Bible, you're praying. Okay. Yeah. I have been praying for a certain thing for years and it has never happened. Why hasn't God answered my prayers? Yeah. Well, God always answers our prayers. Sometimes his answer is no. Mm -hmm. And I'll quote Billy Graham's wife again, quote, I have lived to thank God that he did not answer all my prayers. If he did, I would have married the wrong man five times. <laughs> so sometimes, uh, and there was a French philosopher, I think, Jean Ingelou, and he said, I have lived to thank God mm -hmm. that he did not answer all my prayers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so sometimes his answer is no, and we just got to take that as his answer, and he knows better than we do. That's right. Yeah. Does God answer prayers more if a group is praying? Is there strength in numbers? 
Well, Paul says things like, you know, pray for me that the gospel would go forth and we'd be delivered from evil men. I can't help but think that Paul just believes the more we can get praying for this, mm -hmm. the better. Now, does God hear one person's prayer? Of course he does. I'm thinking of Hannah in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. One woman wanted a baby boy, yeah. and she prayed alone, and she got the baby boy. Mm -hmm. But um, I, too, when I'm, when I'm sick, I get people praying. Mm -hmm. And when, when we're having a problem maybe with our TV show, would you pray for our TV show? The cameras aren't working, you know, this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So just, um, I, I, Paul the Apostle enlisted the prayers of the saints, the Christians on earth. And so I think we can do that too. Okay. Yeah. Somewhere in the Bible, God says, if a son swears at his father, he shall be put to death. What does that mean? In the Old Testament, the Jews had what was called the theocracy, where God was the head of the government in ancient Israel. And some of the rules were pretty blunt. If you find somebody who's violating the Sabbath, purposely working on Sabbath, he's to be stoned. If somebody curses his father and mother, they can be stoned. And some of these things are pretty harsh. The reason we don't apply those today it's not that those things are not wrong, because they are, but we're not in a theocracy anymore. We're, in America, we're under a democracy. Certain countries are under monarchy. So you can't take some of the Old Testament theocracy verses and make them apply to today, because if you start killing your son if he curses you, you're going to jail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, it, not, again, right and wrong is still, is still what it is, but it's, it's a difference of what kind of government we're under. Okay. Yeah. Another question. Is Satan in hell now? No. He's not in, end till, in hell till the end. It, it says in, uh, where is it? In the New Testament it says, Satan is like a roaring lion seeking someone who to, to devour. He is going to and fro on the earth. Mm -hmm. So right now Satan is not in hell. He's on earth. And let's straighten this out too. It never says Satan will be in charge of hell the number one kingpin. I think he'll be on the lowest rung in hell mm -hmm. for the way he's messed things up. So, yeah, Satan doesn't run hell, and he's not there until the end of time. Okay, one yeah. more. Can I pray at night for God to send angels to protect me? Yes, you bet you can. I do that. I've had weird demonic things happen at night, mm -hmm. so almost every night I pray. God, would you please send your angels to protect me? I also pray, God, surround and fill me with your Holy Spirit and send your angels to guard me. <laughs> me too. I've, I've learned I have to do that. Well, everybody, thanks for being with us today. We ask you to pray for our ministry. The way it works is the more uh, funds that come in, the more TV stations we add around the country to preach the gospel. So if the Lord would ask, have you uh, support that, that'd be great. And you can watch our TV shows at any time at pastorstudy.org. And Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thanks for joining us on The Pastor's Study. Thank you for watching The Pastor's Study. You can watch more of our programs at pastorstudy.org. We are on the air preaching the good news of Jesus Christ because of the generous support of you, our viewers. Would you consider supporting our ministry? You may do so at pastorstudy.org or write The Pastor's Study. P.O. Box 41294, Minneapolis, Minnesota 55441. May the blessing of our one triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever.